For a good number of wrestling fans, their first time seeing Cody Rhodes speak came at WWE's Hall of Fame ceremony in 2007. At the time, Cody was a 21-year-old developmental prospect with the genetics and the surname, but how his career would ultimately play out was still anybody's guess. While many would have assumed that he'd at least do okay for himself in the business, far fewer would have predicted where he'd stand 12 years later. The Cody Rhodes we see today represents change as one of the faces of All Elite Wrestling, the strongest startup that the American wrestling audience has seen in close to two decades. Rhodes has come a long way in the three years since he requested his WWE release, betting on himself to do better than his secure but unsatisfying lot within the sports entertainment giant. Those who thought Dusty's youngest son would fall on his face are surely surprised at where he stands in 2019. And as the American Nightmare helps lead the way for pro wrestling's promising powerhouse, let's learn a little bit more about Pharaoh's proud papa. I'm Sam from Cultaholic.com and here are 10 things you didn't know about Cody Rhodes. Join us. Number 10, Family Ties. Even if his famous last name is absent from his current professional handle, much ado has been made of Cody Rhodes' wrestling relatives. When you're the son of the American dream Dusty Rhodes and the half-brother of Dustin Rhodes, aka Gold Dust, those sorts of connections will receive plenty of mention, whether or not they find a place in on-screen storylines. While the Dusty Dustin Cody triumvirate has been well established, the truth is Cody has other relatives in the business. And we're not just talking about Brandy. Cody has two uncles who, in the early 90s, 90s held tag team gold in WWE, both of them brothers-in-law of Dusty. One would be nasty boy Jerry Sags and the other Fred Ottman, the super heavyweight who portrayed Tugboat, Typhoon, and yes, the Shockmaster. <laughs> Additionally, Magnum TA, one of the most promising stars of the 1980s prior to a car accident ending his career, is a godfather to Cody. Being Dusty's son, you would assume that so much wrestling would permeate throughout your life, and apparently that extends to family barbecues as well. Number 9. A Childhood Link like many modern wrestlers, Cody is an avid video gamer, and in his days as Stardust, he appeared on Up Up Down Down, where he played the Star Wars Battlefront beta alongside Xavier Woods. He's even incorporated video game imagery and designs into his wrestling attire through the years, including wearing Metal Gear Solid themed gear at Ring of Honor's final battle in 2018. But it's not just Metal Gear Solid, Rhodes likes to pay tribute to his favourite video game series of all time, The Legend of Zelda. If you look closely at his ring boots at certain points throughout his career, you will see the Triforce symbol. He even has it tattooed on his ring finger and spoke excitedly in a June 2019 interview about Link's Awakening and Breath of the Wild. He also claims to play Super Nintendo's Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past on an annual basis, a pilgrimage of sorts to one of his childhood favorites. Number 8. Matt Mechanics Numerous stars in the industry possess some form of athletic background, be they former football players, gymnasts, or some type of martial artist. In Rhodes' youth, his sport of choice was wrestling, the non-sports entertainment kind. As a teenager at Lasseter High School in Marietta, Georgia, Rhodes seriously pursued the sport, and his success in wrestling was set to open doors for him should he have chosen to continue down that path. As a sophomore, Rhodes finished 6th place in the 171-pound division, and a year later in the 189-pound division, Rhodes captured the Georgia state championship and even repeated as champion in his senior year. The sport continued to beckon Rhodes, who admitted in a 2009 interview with San Jose's Mercury News that he was going to attend Penn State University, but he changed his mind when he decided to enter pro wrestling. Rhodes does credit his wrestling background understandably for giving him a vital foundation that served him very well in the business. Number 7. A Dashing Star there seem to be quite a few second and third generation wrestlers who've shared tales of how their famed fathers tried to steer them away from wrestling when they expressed interest, realizing what a difficult business it really is. Cody Rhodes was no exception to this rule, revealing that Dusty wasn't too keen on the prospect of Cody following in he and Dustin's footsteps one day, and preferring that his youngest boy make it big in another world. And for a time, Cody did try something different with his life. He looked into becoming an actor, and for a year in the mid-2000s, attended the Howard Fine Acting School in Los Angeles. Rhodes revealed in a 2016 interview that Fine still keeps in touch with him, and has continued to help him with acting tips and nuance in both his time as a wrestler and his occasional acting appearances, such as on the TV show Arrow, where he worked alongside one-time wrestling nemesis Stephen Amell. Number 6. Learning the Ropes 
As a teenage boy, Cody sometimes refereed matches for his father's short-lived Turnbuckle Championship wrestling promotion, which ran shows in Georgia, Alabama, and Tennessee from 2000 to 2003. This role gave Cody a valuable education in the construction and progression of wrestling matches, though he wouldn't begin formal training as a wrestler until a few years later. While one might assume that Dusty would have had a greater hand in Cody's physical training, Cody admitted that it was other individuals who guided him in that area. There are four specific men that Cody credits as being his wrestler tutors. Ben, Ohio Valley Wrestling owner Nightmare Dan Davis, his eventual successor Al Snow, Robert Gibson of the Rock and Roll Express, and Cody's future legacy ally, Randy Orton. The last name is a little bit surprising since this would have been around the time that Orton was in his earlier years as a headline talent on Raw or SmackDown, but Rhodes does attribute part of his wrestling education to the Viper. Number 5. Early Perfection Rhodes made his wrestling debut in May 2006 for Ohio Valley Wrestling, where the then 20-year-old lost to Pat Buck, a man that eventually co-hosted a podcast with Ryback and helped train Maxwell Jacob Friedman. Rhodes worked with a number of familiar faces in developmental, and he had an opponents list that included future Rhodes Scholars partner Damian Sandow, then known as Aaron Stevens, The Miz, and Deuce and Domino. It was from the latter duo that Rhodes won his first belt ever, OVW Southern Tag Team titles along alongside another familiar face. On October 18th, 2006, Rhodes captured the gold in Louisville alongside the man who 13 years later nearly caved his head in with a steel chair, Sean Spears. The pair's history has been alluded to in their ongoing AEW storyline, and Rhodes' first taste of wrestling gold indeed came alongside the future Ty Dillinger. Rhodes and Spears had a split in early 2007, leading to a series of gimmick matches that summer, including Lumberjack, Strap, and Steel Cage, with Rhodes winning the rivalry. Number 4. Plans Change like many people who leave WWE, Rhodes hasn't been shy about giving his candid thoughts about his tenure with the company. And with nine years of experience on the main roster, the thoughts and memories are aplenty. In the three years since he's been out of WWE's auspices, Rhodes has made a number of interesting revelations. And one that he made on the Straight Shoot podcast months after his exit is quite curious. According to the former Dashing One, in two different years, he was told he would be winning a Money in the Bank ladder match. Only to be informed on the day of the event both times that he was no longer getting the win. In the interview, Rhodes doesn't specify the years, so among the four matches he participated in between 2010 and 2013, you're left to speculate. Was his lengthy 2011 IC title reign a make good for getting hosed in that year's ladder match? Was he supposed to win instead of Damian Sandow in 2013? We may never know for sure. Number 3. Glittering Gold the 2011 Hell in a Cell pay-per-view was a decent, if not generally average, show. Mostly forgettable, if not for one notable moment. Reigning Intercontinental Champion Cody Rhodes replacing the 13-year-old ovular version of the belt with a white strap version that resembled the classic design in many respects. In the eight years since, Cody's retro-inspired version has remained the belt that WWE has used for the IC title, and we really do have Cody to thank for it. In 2013, Rhodes, who admits to having no love for the belt's previous appearance revealed that he himself paid for the belt to be redesigned, while also adding that he ended up getting reimbursed for his considerable purchase. He believed the nod to the classic look would get a reaction, and he was right. His only regret is that white is the only color used for the straps, and it's hard to disagree. Anyone who doesn't remember the classic IC belt with the black strap fondly probably can't be trusted. Number 2. Stardust Ascending a bleeping space clown. That's how Cody Rhodes summed up the role he played for his final two years in WWE, in which he appeared to be some unholy combination of Goldust and Paul Stanley. For the mannerisms and speech, Cody either channeled Frank Gorshin's portrayal of the Riddler or Repo Man at his absolute most unhinged, while periodically hissing like an irritated house cat. Suffice it to say, that two-year run wasn't exactly the strongest of Cody's career. Rhodes revealed that the person who came up with the Stardust character was Stephanie... McMahon. According to Cody, it was at the gorilla position one night that Stephanie blurted out, why don't you paint your face like your brother? And Vince lit up like a Christmas tree out of excitement. Cody was initially unsure, but after seeing some early sketches of possible costume designs, he grew excited himself about playing a superhero type character. But when Vince kept choosing designs that made Cody look like a travel-sized version of Dustin, his enthusiasm waned. Bleeping space clown indeed. And number one, like father, like son. 
Since leaving WWE in May 2016, Rhodes has gone on to hold two recognized world titles, the Ring of Honor world title upon defeating Christopher Daniels in June 2017, and the NWA world heavyweight belt after going over Nick Aldis at All In in September 2018. The latter belt was worn by his father three times between 1979 and 1986, and certainly it meant the world for Cody to have carried the same belt as the greatest mentor he's ever known. While father and son wrestling combinations are plentiful, the Rhodes became only the second father-son duo to each win a recognized world title in the United States. The first to achieve that feat were Fritz and Kerry Von Erich, with Fritz holding the AWA world title for about two weeks in 1963, and Kerry holding the NWA belt for a few weeks in May of 1984. The Dusty Cody connections continue on, as, like his father, Rhodes helps oversee a major wrestling promotion with a Turner TV deal, and enthralls fans in old-school style bloodbaths. The son of a son of a plumber bet on himself three years ago to do something more ambitious with his time in wrestling, and as we speak, he's only continued to top himself. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments below. You can follow Cultaholic on Twitter at Cultaholic. You can check us out on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cultaholic. If you like what we do here at Cultaholic, you can check us out on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. And no matter what you do, don't ever forget to hit subscribe and join us.